Secret Service takes full responsibility for the tragic events of July 13th. This was a mission failure. The sole responsibility of our agency is to make sure our protectees are never put in danger. We fell short of that in Butler, and I'm working to make sure that this failure does not happen again. I'm focused on ensuring that the full resources of the Secret Service are utilized to safeguard our protectees, and I've implemented and will continue to implement changes to ensure that that happens. We are and we will continue to cooperate with pending oversight investigations of the July 13th failure being done now by Congress, the Department of Homeland Security's Office of the Inspector General, and the independent review directed by President Biden. Additionally, the Secret Service's Office of Professional Responsibility is, in, is currently conducting a mission assurance review. As I stated, I am not willing for the I am not waiting for the completion of those reports, and I've directed the Secret Service to take immediate steps to ensure our protectees are indeed safe. And I will summarize those steps in a moment. I am committed to pursuing accountability for the Secret Service's failure in Butler, Pennsylvania. But let me be clear. If policy violations by Secret Service personnel are identified by the agency's mission assurance review, those individuals will be held accountable. And they will be held accountable to our fair and thorough disciplinary process. The first part of that process is an investigation to identify whether policy violations occurred. Potential policy violations are referred to our Office of Integrity, and appropriate discipline is administered under our table of penalties. The facts will drive the outcomes of those investigations, and I promise accountability. And I will not rush to judgment nor ignore due process. Every single person within the Secret Service feels the weight of what happened. We are in an unprecedented threat environment and a high operational tempo during this presidential campaign. The men and women of the Secret Service are working incredibly hard and doing their jobs under difficult circumstances. They need to focus on their work, and they need to know that I have their backs, and that is my commitment to them. I want to thank our state and local partners. The Secret Service relies on local law enforcement for every protective event. Those valiant men and women work tirelessly protecting their communities. They know the people, places, and terrain that we operate in. We owe them our thanks, and simply put, we cannot do our jobs without them. And I know how important this relationship is. I spent four years in local law enforcement before joining the Secret Service. I know the long hours these men and women put in and the professionalism they bring to this partnership. And in that capacity, I was always proud to support the Secret Service's protective mission when called upon as a municipal police, of, police officer. In no way should any state or local agency supporting us in Butler on July 13th be held responsible for a Secret Service failure. Typically, the Secret Service refrains from commenting on ongoing investigations, but we know these are extraordinary circumstances. So please understand that the information provided today is based on what I know now to a degree of certainty. We will learn more as interviews are completed and further evidence is gathered and analyzed, and I will share more information as it becomes available. But I can say without a doubt that heroism was present that day. Secret Service agents rushed to the stage to shield the former president with their bodies within three seconds of bullets ringing out in an unflinching act of bravery. The Secret Service counter sniper who neutralized the threat with a single shot undoubtedly saved countless lives. We're in a high operational tempo, and I need and I want our Secret Service workforce, the dedicated men and women of the Secret Service. I want to know and I want to make sure that they are uplifted so they can focus on carrying out the mission. They are worthy of trust and confidence, and they deserve your support. And let me take a moment to speak to the American people that are counting on us to do our job, to protect their ability to cast a vote for the candidate of their choice. The Secret Service's successes are largely unknown. 
You will only know of our failures, and those have been documented, and all of them are undeniably dark days in our nation's history. But let me tell you about the dedicated patriots of the Secret Service. These public servants are the quiet professionals working in the background day in and day out. They are standing the watch, providing a blanket of protection to the people that work in the White House, to the thousands of people who attend political rallies and nominating conventions, to the thousands of American citizens who line Pennsylvania Avenue every four years on Inauguration Day to see the new president and the new vice president. And they are out there right now doing this mission. They are focused and they live their professional lives committed to the values of this agency. Justice, duty, loyalty, courage, and honesty. This is who we are, and this is what we do, and we will earn back your trust. I now provide a timeline of the visit to Butler, Pennsylvania. On July 8th, personnel assigned to the agency's Pittsburgh field office conducted planning meetings and a site walkthrough with law enforcement partners and campaign staff. On July 10th, Secret Service counter sniper and technical security personnel arrived in Pittsburgh and began advanced planning for their teams. July 12th, the build out of the campaign rally site began and continued through the early morning hours of July 13th. In the morning of July 13th, a site briefing was conducted with Secret Service personnel and law enforcement partners supporting the event. Secret Service personnel took their posts and a technical security sweep of the protective site commenced prior to the site's opening to event staff, vendors, and to the public. At 12.30 p.m., the Secret Service opened the protective site to event staff and vendors, and then at 1 o'clock, magnetometer screening of the estimated 15,000 people attending the campaign rally, then staff and vendors began. At 5.30 p.m., former President Trump arrived at the campaign rally via Secret Service motorcade, and at that time, he met with supporters in a secure backstage area within the protective site. At 5.45 p.m., a local Butler County Emergency Services Unit counter sniper team member texted the Secret Service counter sniper team leader about a suspicious person and sent two photos of the individual later identified as the assailant. As the assailant. At 5.53 p.m., the Secret Service counter sniper team leader texted the Secret Service counter sniper teams that local law enforcement was looking for a suspicious individual outside of the perimeter lurking around the AGR building. At this time, Secret Service personnel were operating with the knowledge that local law enforcement was working on an issue of a suspicious individual. The concept of local law enforcement working on such issues is common at sites. And on July 13th, there were over 100 calls for support. At 6 p.m., former President Trump took the stage to begin remarks. And based on what I know right now, neither the Secret Service counter sniper teams nor members of the former president's security detail had any knowledge that there was a man on the roof of the AGR building with a firearm. It is my understanding that personnel were not aware the assailant had a firearm until they heard gunshots. At 6.11 p.m., a member of the former President Trump's protective detail contacted their Pittsburgh field office counterpart to inquire about the radio update that there was an issue local law enforcement was looking into near the perimeter. At 6.11 p.m., the assailant's first volley of three shots was fired, and within three seconds, the former president's detail rushed the stage and covered former President Trump, shielding him with their own bodies. The four through eight shots took place over the next several seconds. Fifteen and a half seconds after the assailant's first shot, a Secret Service counter sniper fired a single round that neutralized the assailant. That concludes a quick brief summary of the timeline.